when to become a freelancer. I often get the question, when is it time? When do you think or when do you believe it could be an opportunity for me to start working as a freelancer? Well, to be honest, if you are stuck in a job, sorry to put it that way, um, you're stuck in a job or you get the intention that you're stuck or every two, three, four years you want to change jobs, then it's time to consider about working as a freelancer. Um, you have the struggle on task base. You need to work within your scope, but in fact, you don't want to stick to your scope. You want to help on other segments or other domains within the company where you have experience also. Um, next to that, the challenge, you're missing the challenge. You don't get new opportunities within the company, even though you want to, you bring forward some things, but there's always like, you're always hitting like the wall. Um, and especially not to neglect the internal growth path. If they don't see you in, if you're eager enough to grow and to um, educate yourself and to learn new things, but you don't get the possibility, then it's time to start thinking about freelancing. But of course, that's not, not only the only reason. You could have been 20 years in a specific area or in a specific environment. You have built that many experience and you say, you know what? I want to start sharing that experience with other companies. I don't want to keep all the experience that I have to myself or stick to that one company where I am today. Let me share because I have a lot of knowledge. So start sharing the experience that you have. That's one of the main things uh, for starting a freelance as a freelancer. Most freelancers do have an entrepreneurial mindset. Um, it, it goes rapidly. We want to speed up. We want to bring added value for the company, not only after one month or two months, but we want to bring added value very rapidly. So we have the entrepreneurial mindset in our heads. We, we want that. We want to do something for the company, make them grow, bringing the added value. We like challenges, of course, as a freelancer. Um, if you like uh, challenges, most definitely freelance could be a path, a path to take for you. Um, do not think about um, uh, the things you cannot do, but think about the skills you have built during the years and the, the things you want to do. That's a very important one. So challenges, of course. Freedom in decision taking. A very important one, we go, we stand, we do whatever we want. We are not on the payroll of a company. The company will not tell us uh, when to be in the office. Of course, if you're working on site at a customer, you need to respect certain things, the culture within the company. But if you want to take a day off, you take a day off, but you let them know well in advance, of course. Um, but it's fully up to you. You take your own decisions. Why? Why would you become a freelancer? Again, you choose your own career paths. You decide where to go. You could start as a generalist, but at a certain point in time, six, seven, eight years, depend on what you want, you start thinking, thinking on what do I want to do next? I've done so many things now in my career as an employee or being a freelancer. You could jump into something completely different because you followed some uh, some trainings during the years you gained experience in a certain thing and you think you could go another direction within being a freelancer so you choose it's your own choice flexibility and variation of course the assignments that you have they will all be different they will all be in the same line of expertise that you have but there is a flexibility on the assignments and the variation you bring. Monday, you could work for a customer where you don't get a lot of energy, for instance, but the other days you could just as well work on an assignment which give you a lot of energy. As such, you have energy for your customer on Monday. You choose, you decide, you make and bring in the variation yourself. Sharing the knowledge, we've said it before, but that's a huge one. Constantly, when you change customers, you share your knowledge. You want to bring something to your customers. You want to 
you're you're you want to help them you want to make sure that your expertise is shared along the way because that's the main reason why you're there for that customer helping them they have an issue on one side or another side um, you help them within the company you want to keep learning for every assignment there are new things to learn if we think about applications the tools they work on the way they work even if you're in specific domain the culture the vision the values they 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 trust in at the company so you get a lot of opportunities as a freelancer within a company but also next to that there are a lot of communities today where you can learn about specific things how to work on your personal branding what to post on linkedin how to make your price setting so you never stop learning you take whatever you can which comes on the road what comes on the road complete independency you and only you you're in the lead again your career path you decide if you're not open for a specific assignment that you see along the way you don't do it you decide on your agenda if you want to work early morning or late evening up to you if you want to break, make take a big break at lunchtime you can do it no problem at all and again the career paths your own choice work life balance very important for a lot of us um, we want to work whenever we can if you're in a situation with kids for instance and morning is difficult or evening is difficult that's not a problem you fix your agenda you keep you take control of your own agenda you are the one and only and the responsible to keep that balance uh, keep the balance okay your added value for the business a very important one if you ask me you're available immediately. Most of the freelancers, they have like some spare time on the right or the left. My advice is always, if it's an assignment and they ask you for a longer period or for a, a more hours than you're available, and the assignment is pretty okay for you, so it gives you a positive feeling, go for it, start with a couple of hours and build your hours during time and try to and another assignment which doesn't give you the energy you're looking for. So in fact, um, most freelancers are available very rapidly. You have experience in certain domain, in specific domains or in various domains, very important. There are people who have always been working in construction. That's a hard one. But for instance, you've worked in construction, you worked in a legal, you worked in um, a finance firm, you worked in a lot of different environments. So you bring in a lot of experience, which is a very big added value. You have a low cost. You don't need to bring in, they don't need to bring in a laptop for you. They don't need to foresee a desk. You could make, you could have a flex desk wherever there is a space on the site. Um, you make sure you earn a lot to compensate for, like we say it in Belgium, the holiday bonus or the social charges. You are responsible for that, not the company you're working for. So basically, you're a cost to them. And on top of that, the total cost is known at the start. If you're talking with them about your hourly or your daily rate, they know the cost. They can multiply with the number of time and the months to go that you will work on a specific assignment. So they know beforehand what you will cost to them. Flexibility on the job and working hours, as we discussed, that's a true added value for the business. You're flexible. If there is a deadline to catch, you will make sure that the deadline is there and that you um, stand there when they need you. So you can, they can ask you for a specific task when you're available next to the other customers you have, you could take it to you. You could also start in a specific job or a specific role within a company or for an assignment, or you're dedicated to working on an assignment, uh, excuse me. And during the time, you see that there might be another possibility within the company. By showing your experience, it could just as well be that they put you or ask you for another task or another role within the company. So you start with something, but you could grow through another 
scope or another uh, task during the time you're working there. And in that way also extend the, the time you're staying there. You have an instant added value. I'm very sorry, but if you have companies asking you, you will be trained for two, three weeks. That's not a good thing. If we need to be trained a couple of days or, or weeks before we can really start the assignment, that's not a good thing for you as a freelancer. So your added value is you deliver instantly. Your added value needs to be there within the next few hours or the next few days. You can work remote or on site. Basically, or, or very important during times of Corona, um, the freelance, the asking from the business for freelancers was booming. One of the reasons there was the remote because a lot of employees within the company were not used to, we could just as well assist uh, remotely. So we could interact very fast. The entrepreneurial mindset, of course, we will go, we will push ourselves to a certain limit. We want to deliver for the company. So we are go-getters. We create our own exposure. It's free publicity we make. We will not do things or, or, or say things which are not true because it's our image in the end. The way we work for one customer could bring in two, three other customers. So we will do our utmost because we gain afterwards. And the tailor-made service, we can do whatever you want based on what you want. So we make a package around that. Challenges, a very important one. For me, challenges, what do you look for? What do, what do you pay attention for? as being a freelancer. Know what you wanna do and stick to that. Don't do the things or the assignments you don't wanna do. Follow your intuition. It comes later in the same slide, but it has been proven for many years. If your intuition is not correct from starters, why would you start an assignment? There are plenty of others. So don't do, stick to what you want. Pay attention to your overdue invoices, a very important one. Control, monitor. I know the customer, he will pay. No, 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 no. Make sure he pays. Make sure he pays. Get him on the phone, send reminders. Don't wait until it's too late. We know many examples of that. Focus. Plan some time into your agenda on a weekly basis, Friday afternoon, whatever time is suitable for you, but check your, check your invoices, a very important one before it's too late. Never work for free. Many examples as well. Oh, but you know what? I'll make a proposition. I'll make a, a strategy plan. I'll make whatever. I make a marketing plan for them because then they will be convinced of my experience and then they will assign me for the job. No, don't do, please don't do, never work for free or try to turn it around. Make something, give them the bullet points, don't give them the details so they cannot work on it because the idea is in your head, it's not in their head. They are not able to perform it or to, to um, deliver it in the way you want to do it. So never, never, never for free. I'm sorry, I'm too busy to make my prospection to go networking. Okay, but facing a long-term assignment, I fully agree, you're busy four days in a week. You have one other customer every now and then on and off. You have no time, you're, you're, you're tired. You, you're already working on a Saturday, for instance. Don't forget, push it, block it into your agenda, not on a weekly basis, but every now and then, because before you know your assignment is gone, has stopped and you have to start over again. Even prospects you had months ago, try to stay in contact. You were not available at that time. You could not make yourself available at that time. Keep contact, don't lose contact with them because one day they might be your next customer. Undervalued rates, very important one. We sometimes forget the mileages we want to put in. Don't do, work on a, your rate, shows your experience. Don't under, don't go above. Try to know what your colleagues are doing. Try to keep that in mind 
because if you're underrated and they go into a, a, a conversation or they have a lot of other freelancers that they meet and they will compare, they will start thinking that your experience is not that good because you're underrated. Think twice, especially also when you're going above the limit of what's market related, don't go above. Because nowadays we see a lot of people who have, um, who have increased their prices like two years ago because there was a shortage in certain profiles for freelancers. We have inflation coming up. It's a tough one now. Either you stay on the same level because if you increase now and you did a big increase about two years ago, it's a difficult one. Mileage is very important. Make clear in your contract that it's included or not included. My advice, take for yourself or think about the mileages you want to drive without charge. Meaning, for instance, you could say everything what's within 15 to 20 Ks, you know you get it for free. But basically, I charge you. But you know it's within the range of 20, you get it for free. And a very important one, always believe your own rate is the one you want. Because for a customer, if they want to pay penis, they get monkeys. It's their decision. Don't go into that discussion with them. Leave them. You're not worth it. They are not worth it, excuse me. Dare to say no, follow your intuition. There we go. You have an interview with a customer online or on site with a potential, uh, with a prospect. But leaving that, driving back home or having a coffee at home or in your office, you think about the things they said and you don't follow their vision completely. You don't have a real click, but on the other hand, you have some spare time in your agenda. Think about your intuition. Was it correct? You laughed together. You said something next to the business or it was very strict and you're not that. You want to you want to do other things for that customer. Follow your intuition, very important one, because it will be more difficult to step out after two months than to step in for a wrong job. Create trust, very important one, to gain your customers. Try to build trust, even when they're a prospect. Being in touch with them, follow up your prospects, gain their trust. Work on your pitch, very important one. Don't go into or step into an office or have an online meeting with a prospect and start talking about all the things you can do. Try to find out beforehand, what are they doing? What could be the bottleneck? For instance, if you're looking from my perspective then to a website, they contact you, they have like 20 vacancies. Start asking them, why 20 vacancies? What's happening? Why do you have a problem filling this, those positions in? Build your pitch onto the prospect you have in front of you. Know what their struggles are. Know your true value. If a prospect in the end of the call starts asking you, okay, but I know I get the thing. I, I've understood what you're doing as a freelancer, but can you tell the explanation between interim and outsourcing? Then you have a problem. Meaning the company is not ready to start working with you. So build, know what your added value could be. Two words, an interim or an outsourcing. Don't forget about them. They are still there in our business. Draw up a contract. You start it, it's, a, it's somebody from, from your French, eh, from your friends. They have a company, they work plenty of hours. You discussed after hours with a drink. I could help you, I could assist you. It starts like that, four hours, six hours a week. And all of a sudden you're working there two years, but you don't have a contract. And there starts to be a conflict. What do you do? Always draw a contract. Even when they show up with a contract, try to find a mixture that is acceptable for you. Never accept the contract that they draw. Make sure you have something in the middle. Follow up your prospects. We had it before, very important. Don't neglect them. Send them something. If you had a very good contact and for instance, they celebrating their existence 10 years, five years, send them a package, send them a bottle of wine, do something, but make sure they think about you. 
Don't wait for a prospect that has put you on hold. You can never know that you've been put on hold. But if the process for hiring you for a specific assignment takes too long, no, don't wait for them. Leave them alone. And when they return and you're not longer there, too bad. But you will help another customer. Don't wait for them. Yes, but they might. Yes, but they will. No. Don't see yourself as a long term. See yourself as a quick fix. They want you because they have a struggle. They have an issue within the company. If they see you as a long term solution for their problem that they had in the beginning, then it's not a good thing. And then they might extend, extend, extend. When you come to a point at the delta of one year, one year and a half, I don't want to do this anymore. And then you will have to find a good way to get out. So don't do. You're a quick fix, not a long term.